Now, another common type of image that you're likely to import are Photoshop files. I'm actually going to create a new project. Let's just say new project, and we're not going to save that old one. This time, I'm going to use a lower res file. I'm going to use just a regular NTSC DV sequence and say open. It opens up. I can see the image here. I'm going to go back to that image that we saw here called Bright Ideas. And this, if you notice the extension there, PSD, this is a Photoshop document. And Photoshop documents can have layers in them, which is pretty cool because if we bring them into motion the proper way, we can manipulate the individual layers and animate them you know, separately. So you can have different things happening to the different layers. And here we've got a bunch of different elements. Let's go ahead and import this image. Well, if I just select it here in the file browser and I drag it over here to add it, or I click the import button, it gets imported, but it gets imported in a flat way. And in fact, if I show my layers list here, you can see the image is just a single item, it's a still image, and it looks no different than that cat we just imported. But in fact, I happen to know that this image, these are all separate layers that we want to be able to manipulate individually. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're going to import it a different way. I'm going to say File Import, and I'm going to get the Import Files dialog. And now here, I'm going to choose that same thing, brightideas.psd, and when I say Import, I get a new little window. And this window gives me an option here. What do you want to import? Do you want to import the merged layers, the flattened layers, or all layers, or any of the individual layers? So you see I've got these all these individual layers that I could potentially import, just one of them. Or maybe I just want to import one of these layers at a time, and that's fine too. But in this case, I'm going to say all layers, and that's going to import the layers as the object. And here you see, now here is my brightness object, and instead of being imported as a single image, it's imported as a group, a layered group with all of these elements in it. And you see each of these elements are individual. And if I click on them, I can select. There's just the bright ideas letters. Here's just the shape of that light bulb. Here's the little squiggly uh, yellow line, which happens to exceed beyond the boundaries of the edge of the clip, which is kind of cool. And that's because that's the way it was saved in Photoshop. So we can even import images that, you know, with retaining bounding boxes bigger than the original. And here's our background image. But you'll notice it looks a little different. Look at our preview over here, and look at this over here. For one thing, the line is purple, and the color, everything's been shifted a little bit, and that's because of this hue saturation layer. This is an adjustment layer, and if you know anything about Photoshop, adjustment layers are a special, really cool tool that allow you to apply an effect to all of the layers beneath them. But unfortunately, adjustment layers do not get imported, or they get imported as this empty object here, but they do not, the effect of them is not imported into motion. Also, there are some uh, layer style uh, elements. So, for example, the word bright ideas, but I'm just going to go ahead and import the, the flattened version here, and you can see the difference. Here's the flattened version. Notice the drop shadow on the word bright ideas, right? There's the drop shadow, and here we don't see that drop shadow. And that's because in Photoshop, that drop shadow was being was applied as a layer effect, and layer effects are not imported either. And then finally, the word bright ideas, this is text. Uh, in Photoshop, this is an editable text object. I could be able to go in there and change the letters. If I had a spelling mistake or if I wanted to change some detail, I could just retype it. But when you import it into motion, that layer, the, the text layer, is imported as a flat, just as a graphic object. And that means that, again, like the other things, if I zoom way in on it, you start to see the these blurry edges because I'm not looking at the original vector art of the text. I'm looking at a rasterized flat version of that text. I'm just going to do undo there to get it back to the beginning. So there are a bunch of these elements that are not a, you're not able to import in motion. I'm going to switch to Photoshop real quick. And here you see the original image in Photoshop. And you can see here is my hue saturation adjustment layer. If I turn that off, that's basically now that matches what we see over here in, in motion because the adjustment layer is being ignored. Similarly, the glow on the light bulb and the shadow on the word bright ideas, these are both controlled. See the little FX there? These are controlled by the layer, layer style. And that layer style, which is a really nice feature in Photoshop, is not imported into uh, motion when you import.
If you wanted that glow to be stuck and be imported, then what you would need to do is basically flatten that layer. And one nice, quick, easy way to flatten the layer is to add an empty layer next to it. Select the two of them and click the pop-up menu here and say uh, merge layers. That's going to combine those two layers. And now that light bulb with the little glowy thing is burned in. That is now a flat layer, no layer effect. And if I do it, I'm just going to do a save as. I'm going to call this Bright Ideas 2. And now if I go back to Motion, let's just choose File Import or Command I. Choose Bright Ideas 2. Import. Say bring me all layers. OK. And now we still don't have the adjustment layer that was making it pink, but we do have the glow on the light bulb because I flattened that layer in Photoshop. And so that now that layer in the light bulb there is um, that the glow is built in and I can have that stay here right here in motion So when you're working with Photoshop files, you do need to adjust certain things You do need to be aware of what does important what doesn't if you wanted to change the text You need to go ahead and do that in Photoshop if you want to have those layer effects or Adjustment layers you're gonna have to burn those in and flatten the file in Photoshop or flatten those individual layers and so forth in order to get that result but nonetheless, still pretty amazing and powerful that you can take your image. Let's actually just delete the old one here. And let's say if what we wanted to do here is we wanted to grab that little, the yellow, uh, whatever that line is, the little electronic line there, and just do a little animation. We could keyframe this or use a, a behavior to animate this little line to move in the background, or we could have the light bulb change colors or whatever. You know, anything you can do in motion, you can apply and have these individual layers affected individually just like they were individual still images you imported, except that they all came from that one Photoshop file with all the individual layers intact.